have you back. If you're just joining us, you're watching Channel Television live from Lagos. A reminder of our major stories. Yet again, suspected herdsmen strike in Benue State, killing 11 persons in Tombo village in Logo local government area. Inspector General of Police raises security alert levels in Benway and River State, says more security operatives will be deployed to track the perpetrators. A large turnout of voters recorded in Delta State Council poll as violence mars the exercise in Ugeni local government area. And at least eight migrants drowned with 84 rescued after a dinghy sank off the coast of Libya. on our top stories and others, please visit our website. It's channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channels web. Log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channel TV and Channel 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. And here are some of the pictures you sent into our eyewitness portal today. We begin with this one from Maguru area on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway showing a gridlock at the end of the road. Our eyewitness reporter says that this was caused by a container that fell around Areko axis of the road this morning. And we move on to these set of pictures from Sokoto, the Sokoto State Capitol, showing an overloaded or overloaded vehicles. Our eyewitness reporter says the drivers were arrested by men of the Federal Road Safety Corps, and he has asked motorists to exercise caution. Finally, is this image from Lafia Makodi Road in Nasarawa State showing an overloaded vehicle with people sitting on it. Our eyewitness reporter wants this discouraged because of the danger it poses. We thank you so much for sending those images in and we ask you to keep them coming. Now let's get some perspective on the upsurge of violence attacks in different parts of the country and I'm now being joined on the News at 10 live from our Buja studios by a retired military officer, Major General Cecil Esakaigbe. You're welcome to the News at 10. Now, the killings in parts of the country, especially in Benue and River State in the past few days, have been unsettling. What does this say about the security arrangement in the country at the moment? Thank you very much. The portents and luminous signs for a very bad beginning of a year. This state of trepidation that we have witnessed at the beginning of the year is frightening and, as a matter of fact, it was better captured by Speaker Dogara recently when he said that it's worrisome and unjustifiable. You see, the trajectory and the occurrence, the frequency of occurrence, are so beating the imaginations of a lot of individuals. Not that as we don't know what is going on, but we continue to allow this thing to fester. Now the question is, where are the early warning signals? Where is the intelligence gathering to be able to stem the tribe? The inability and the seeming constraint of the people charged with the internal security architecture to contain this crisis have further heightened the tension for the year. Now, if the attack in River State took security op operatives off guard, isn't it out of place to say that the same thing happened again in Benue, given the tension that has occurred in the state, especially with the aftermath of the law banning open grazing? Are you satisfied with the terms of the response by security operatives? I'm not satisfied, and there's nobody with the same mind that would say they're satisfied with this response. The most important thing is that we must start to put the finger on the, snail, on the scale in favor of proactiveness rather than reactiveness. The question of reacting to situations when you're not able to plug them before they happen calls for serious concern. So the, that's caused a lot of problems, and the citizen is beginning to be wary. We are now in a state of epistatophobia. Uh, that is fear of trust. When the citizens are not able to get the trust of the people that are to protect them, then the cause for concern. The police is ill-equipped. 
the police need to be retrained, and the reaction to this crisis has to be very, very well calculated. For okay. example, there must be a very, very correct diagnosis of the situation at hand. Without a correct diagnosis, there are, no, there are not going to be any good treatment. The okay. president deserves a correct diagnosis to be able to take decisions that will stem this stride. A situation where the chief security officer of his state has clearly stated what is happening in the state, and the police describe it as a communal feud, calls for serious concern. But General, we must if tell I may it the way it is here, and tell it the way it is to be able to get out of this conundrum. General, if I may come in here, if you notice, most of these attacks took place overnight when the people are most vulnerable. In your view, what's the best form of defense against this? There must be a systematic intelligence gathering. This call for serious interagency cooperation among those who are in charge of the security architecture. And mostly, too, the security architecture for internal security is outdated. We, be, we must start to begin to review it because the internal security challenges we have today have transcended that batting, water cannon, and the tear gas of the police because these criminals are having sophisticated weapons that demands an action. So we need deep intelligence to interpret the early warning signals that will be able to get the security agencies intact to respond in and as appropriate. And that brings me to my next question. Some other parts of Nigeria are also faced with different forms of violence. What do you foresee as the approach, especially with the elections coming up and 2018 is a key period prior to 2019, the election time? The effeminum of uh, Timmy youths that are not employed and uh, the gainsaying of the courtist activities in various universities that have now got into the low level of mechanics and drivers call for a serious attention. So, and the police is overstretched. The number of police in this country is very, very small. The United Nations prescription is about one policeman to 450 people. In Nigeria, we have about one, uh, one uh, policeman to 1,850 people. So that means only about 51 million out of over 180 million people are covered by police. And more so, even the few policemen we have are in the hands of a lot of politicians and some other people who are looking at them for escort. So why don't you have to design a security architecture that involves private people who will now get involved in the position of protecting VIPs and allow the police to do their court duties? And like I said, the police have to be prepared. They need to be repackaged. They need to be retrained. They need to be equipped. What about community policing? Where does it come in here? That is why I suggested that there should be a total revision of the security architecture. Community policing is very, very apt at this time. If you look at what happened in Onega, in uh, Burma and uh, this in the River State, the OSPAC, that is the Onega Security Peace and Advisory Committee, were able to waylay the hoodlums of uh, Don Wenny. They were coming to attack in Ahoda. So in many other places like Adamawa, Raraba and other areas, they also have these uh, native hunters that have contributed you know, to contain the security menaces. So this very security architecture we're talking about is about getting the individuals, the citizens to be involved in the protection of their communities. So that is essence, what community policing is talking about. But the police can superintend over their behavior, and the state should create enabling laws to enable them to perform and by carrying uh, maybe some uh, less uh, sophisticated weapons to be able to, you know, stem the tide. So community policing is one of those uh, vices of security architecture that we are recommending, and it's very apt. It has happened in many other places. Major General Cecil Esakaibe, thank you so much for speaking with us. To politics now. In Delta State, people trooped out to cast their votes for their choice candidates for the chairmanship and councillorship positions in all the 25 local government areas today. But pockets of violence in Ugeli North local government area almost marred the process as three persons were injured and the office of the Delta State Independent Electoral Commission raised. Deserted roads. That's one of the signs that an exercise is taking place. It's the local government election day. 
voting will not start until election materials are distributed. And that's what's happening at the State Independent Electoral Commission's office. Our supervisors receive the necessary documents for onward transmission. The hard to reach riverine areas are not left out of the exercise. I like the way that I tell me everything. Cast my vote. Luckily, when I came, the place is decongested, so straight on, credited, and then, of course, I cast my vote. While the exercises are judged peaceful, pockets of violence broke out in some areas of the state. Here in Uheli North, angry youths raised the Delta State Independent Electoral Commission's office, while snatching of ballot boxes and sporadic shooting are alleged to have taken place in Uheli South. The DSEC officer that came bought into, bought into that idea that the, the gunshot in the environment was too much. And it is their boys that were shooting the gun. They brought guns. As the exercise proper gets underway, accreditation and voting is done simultaneously. And the state governor, Ifan Yokoa, is here at Ward 3, Owalero, Ikan Northeast local government area, to perform his civic duty. We have done our best to ensure a free and fair process, and uh, we hope that we're able to uh, get things right. I heard that uh, some talks of the APC actually moved into the, uh, were able to move into the uh, INEC office to uh, put fire on some of the electoral materials that I don't have the full details as of now until I'm briefed by the Commissioner of Police. Voting over. All eyes are now on the state electoral umpire and what shape the results would take at the end of the exercise. And still talking politics, the Northeast chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, are asking the governor, Ibrahim Dangwangbo, to contest for the presidency come 2019. The Northeast Chairman of Khan, Reverend Abari Kala, explains that the governor has demonstrated true leadership and is the best man for the job. Dance and songs of praises reverberating in the Gombe State Government House as Christians put aside religious sentiments to appreciate the state government for the peace in the state. They came with gifts as well. The Christian community is obviously happy with the leadership style of Governor Ibrahim Dankwabu, and they did not mean words as they urge him to run in the 2019 presidential election. You, His Excellency Alaji Ibrahim Hassan Dankwabu, PhD OON, is working out ways to solve problems of our people without ill feeling. A critical movement of our national of our national problems. The country needs you to salvage our dear national uh, national from total economic decay. Therefore, we are up. We are up enough for Gombe State. We are praying and trusting God to take you up to the presidency from 2019, and our vote must count. However, the governor is yet to make up his mind. What is paramount to him is the immediate task of developing the state. One thing I guarantee you is we will continue to give priority to our people. We will continue to give priority to the welfare of our people. We will continue to prioritize security. We will continue to pro pro prioritize social services, health facilities, and things that will maintain the minimum comfort of life to ordinary persons in Gombe State. Nevertheless, the Christian leaders will not leave without saying words of prayers for the governor and for peace in the state. When the news at 10 returns, Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves climb further to over $39 billion, gains $12.9 billion in one year. That's on businesses. Stay with us.